Hello again, it's good to be back with you. Um, what I'd like to talk about today is how to calculate the deflection of a beam when the beam is made out of more than one material. So let's say we've got a beam that's cantilevered. Now I can't put a four meter beam in my little office, so I'll use a tiny one. This is my beam. It's actually a stick, but it's a beam for us today. And let's say it's cantilevered on one end and it's got a load on the other end. Okay, pretty obviously there's going to be a deformation down, right? And if we have one material, that's the expression, PL cubed over 3EI, where P is the load at the end, uh, length is uh, L, 3 is just a number obviously, E is the elastic modulus, and I is the area moment of inertia. Okay? And it's easy enough if it's one material, you just grind through that, that's hardly even worth doing a video over. But there's an awful lot of cases where it's more than one material. This happens absolutely all the time. So let's imagine we've got a beam that's uh, 50 millimeter by 100 millimeters high. If you're into uh, English units, that's about two inches wide and about four inches high. So it's about that wide and about that high. So uh, two by four, pretty much. Um, and it's made out of two materials. I'm calling material A will have an elastic modulus of 70 gigapascals. And if you're happen if you're up on your uh, elastic modulus data, that corresponds to aluminum. And in the middle. B uh, got an elastic modulus of 205 gigapascals. Now, would we really make a beam that's got a steel center and then aluminum caps? Maybe not. I'm having a hard time thinking of why you would do that. But it's representative of an awful lot of other kinds of cases where we really would do that. So it's a, it, this is a pretty good thing to study. So here's the big deal here. Notice that EI down there. EI is a stiffness term, pretty much. Um, e is the part of the stiffness due to the material. Okay? Steel is about three times stiffer than aluminum. Turns out to be three times as heavy too, but that's kind of coincidence, I guess. Um, I is the stiffness due to its cross-sectional shape. So you can change either one of these and change the stiffness of a beam. The thing is, E and I almost always show up together. It's very seldom that they show up one separated from the other when you're doing a calculation like this. All right? So what I can do in great engineering tradition is I can transform a problem I don't know how to solve into an equivalent problem I do know how to solve. And that's what we're going to do here. And we're going to use, make use of this idea that EI is stiffness. Okay? So let me clear off some acreage here. And uh, I better leave that. Okay. I've got two different materials. So what I can do is I can say, well, what if I change the geometry so that I could use one material to represent the whole beam? If I change the shape and only used one material, could I get an equivalent stiffness? Well, yeah, you can. All right, so here's how this works. The stiffness of a, of a rectangle, or the area of moment of inertia of a rectangle, is 112 bh cubed. Okay, So the stiffness due to cross-sectional shape, which is this, varies linearly with the, with the width. Okay, that's, if th this, is, this is meant to represent a rectangle where that's base and that's height. Get out of your way here. Um, if I change the width, the stiffness changes proportionally. If I change the height, it changes disproportionately. Well, Let's see. Let me let me think about this. E B ah, there we go. E B over E A is basically 205 over 70, and that is, let me see if I can get that number right, 2.929. 2.929. Okay. So what? Well, if I take B and I make it 2.929 times as wide, and I give it the same elastic modulus as A, I'm going to have accounted for the fact that that's a different material, and make it so the beam is all made out of one material, or the equivalent beam is all made out of one material. So here's what I'm going to make. Okay, There's the top of the beam. There's the middle part. And there's the bottom of the beam. Okay, if these all have the same elastic modulus, but this is wider, 
I've accounted for the fact that the steel is stiffer than the aluminum. Okay, So by stretching this out by that ratio, I can now assume it's all made out of aluminum and the extra stiffness due to the steel is accounted for. So if you do this, what you get, I total is I1, and I guess, what, what did I call this here? That's uh, 1, and that's 2 in, in this new drawing here. I1 plus A1 D1 squared plus 2 I2 plus A2 D2 squared, okay? Now what I'm doing here is I'm using the parallel axis there. Now let's do that. There's one box, that's that middle one, and then there's this second box right there. Well, these are both the same, so I'll just multiply, I'll include this once and multiply it by 2, all right? Now the other thing, this distance, D, is distance from the centroid of the uh, entire shape, which is right there in the center, to the centroid of each individual box. Well, for 1, D is 0, so that term just goes away, all right? This one, well, I can figure that out. I haven't changed the dimensions of that any. I can figure this out. I know what the dimensions of that are. This is easy. This is going to be really easy. So let, all we've got now is a bookkeeping problem. Let's, let's, uh, let's do some bookkeeping over here. Well, I equals 1 12 B1 H1 cubed. So it's 1 over 12. Now, if you multiply uh, was that 50 times 2.929 you get 146.43 and I got to do this in meters so 0 0.14643 meters and the height hasn't changed any so 0 0.050 meters and cube that and if you do that you get sorry I have to look this up guys 1.525 1.525 1.525 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth. Now, well, that's a terrible, I did a terrible job there. Let's see if I can do better. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now, before we go any further, that is just a really, really tiny number. Why is that so tiny? Well, a meter is about that big. Okay? And my beam is about that big. And I take that difference and I raise it to the fourth power. If there's anything wrong with the uh, metric system, the SI system, is you tend to get either really little or really big numbers. Really little numbers, or whenever we had those, that's, that's 10 to the ninth up there. If there's anything good about the English system, and there isn't much, it's that you tend to get human-sized numbers, you know? An inch is about this big. My foot, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't get it up here into the, my foot up into the screen. My foot really is a foot long. Okay? A yard really does go from there to there. That's good. So you tend to get human sized numbers. So there's I1. Okay, I2 now. This is going to be the one we've changed. So I'll call it B. Or I'm sorry, that's the one we haven't changed. B2H2 cubed. Okay, that's going to be 1 over 12 times the base is 0 0.050. Because remember, we haven't changed this any. That's meters times 0 0.025 meters cubed. Okay, and if you want to run that, work that number out, I will. 6.51 times 10 to the minus 8. Wow. Okay, again, real tiny number. Okay, well, area 2. See, let's check these off. I did this one. I did this one. I need area 2. So that's 0 0.050 meters times 0 0.025 meters. Whoa, that was awful. I got in a hurry, didn't I? Okay, and that's going to be 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, last thing I need to know is D2. Well, let's see. There to there is 25 meters. And there to the, or millimeters, millimeters, there we go. And that's 12.5 millimeters because that's 25. So you add those together and you get 37 and a half millimeters. So that's 0 0.0375 meters. Whew. Okay. All you got to do now is plug all that mess into there. And what you get is 5.171 
times 10 to the minus 6. Now we can be meters to the fourth. Okay, so, okay. All this works now. What we've done now, just to remind you what, what's going on here, is I've extended this to, ch to uh, account for the fact that the stiffness of the steel in the center is 2.929 times as high as the stiffness of the aluminum, and then considered the whole thing to be made of aluminum. That works. So if you work all these numbers out, if you plug, let me get, get, go back maybe to my original expression here. We don't really need this anymore, so I'll get rid of all, ooh, well, here, that. Okay, I total. All right, so my displacement at the end is, let me make sure I get this right, PL cubed over 3EI. Now for E, I'm going to use aluminum, and for I, I'm going to use that. What I've done, the big idea here is I've transformed a problem I don't know how to solve into an equivalent problem I do know how to solve. They have, when I say equivalent, it means they have the same answer. So, let's do this. I had a load of a thousand newtons, okay, times four meters cubed. I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. Three times, uh, three times, 70 times 10 to the 9th Pascals times 5.171 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the 4th. Okay, is that going to work? Well, let's see. Newton, zip, everything's going to work out. So when you do that, you get 0 0.05 eight nine four. Zero point five eight nine four what? Well it's gonna be meters. Everything was done in the base units here. I haven't I, I didn't try to carry millimeters through. If you try to carry millimeters through, if you do it right, it'll work. But if you don't do it right, you're gonna mess up. So if you stick to the, the basic units, newtons, meters, seconds, kilograms, don't work in anything but those three. The units pretty much take care of themselves. Okay, so that's uh, 58.94 millimeters. Well, is that a lot or a little? Well, it's about that far. Well, on a four meter beam, if it's only bending about that far, I'm, I'm probably okay. So there you go, that's how to do this. What we're doing now is to show how to calculate the deflection of a beam with two materials, and again, what we're doing is we're saying we're going to transform the uh, beam with two materials into an equivalent beam of only one material by making uh, one of the two materials sections with, with the two materials in it seem wider. Okay, we're going to we're going to make that transformation so we can use one elastic modulus for the whole beam and apply this familiar equation. So I hope it helps, and I'll talk to you next time.